Right, well, this is a video that I hoped to not have to make, but apparently I do have to make it. And um, so it looks like me and Jason are gonna leave Andorra. They've shut down the mountains because of all the ski resorts are closed now because of the coronavirus. And we're gonna probably head back down to Spain a month, month and a half earlier than we were supposed to. Um, so I said I'd just document it, let you know what's going on, let you know how we're doing it. There isn't actually a lot of videos on how to transport a tank which has planted uh, which has plants inside it most people are saying to take the plants out and I don't want to do that because I like the tank the way it is so I'm gonna lower the water level and I'm gonna take out any fish that I can and then we're just gonna have to go like that probably gonna leave it's Friday now and it we're Friday the 13th Ooh. Ooh. Friday the 13th, so um, yeah, it looks like it might be Sunday the 15th when we leave. But um, as I said, I'm not gonna miss this opportunity to keep you updated and let you know what the coronavirus is doing to our little season here in Andorra. Okay, so we're just on our way down to Langasana and to Andorra Levé. As I said, we, it looks like we're going to have to leave Andorra. Now I need to get some bags to transport the fish. We also are going to just stop into a shop and get a little bit of shopping. It's actually a lovely day here and it's just really sad because everybody's bringing back their snowboard, everybody's bringing back their skis, all the tourists that are here are, are done pretty much and the people who are supposed to be here next week, well the mountain is closed so it doesn't look like they're going to be coming anywhere. Okay, so we're just heading into the shop now. It's been kind of mental since we got into that door of the way. Everybody seems to... Yep. Oh, no. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. Um, not as bad as Britain and Ireland. It's still quite bad. So it is kind of crazy in here. Everybody's going nuts. What can you do? Alright. So we just went into the fish shop, I didn't bother recording in there because, because I wasn't getting anything really, I just got bags. We're going to be transporting the fish down to Saloon, which is four hours away. I'm going to try and make a makeshift one, a makeshift aerator when we get to the house. And I'm going to remove the sword tails, the bala shark when we're leaving, and I'm going to put them into the bag, either with the one barb that's left because one of the barbs passed away, or they're going to go into separate bags and the shrimp, the quarries and the loaches are going to stay in the tank. I'm going to lower the water level down. I'm going to stick the tank back in its box and then stick the box behind the seat and hopefully there's not too much splashing around and everything survives including the plants and the fish. So look, what else can we do? This is a uh, coronavirus problem. Alright, so this is the tank the night before we leave Andorra. Looks um, a lot different to when I first put the plants in. Everything's grown like crazy. And hopefully this move doesn't kill it tomorrow. The barb is actually over here. Yeah, so there's our barb. She has her own little tank for now. Her partner didn't make it. Alright, so fish tank is gone and we're gone. Leaving Andorra. Um, I've packed away all the filters and stuff that's down there. TV is gone. The fish tank is in here. Plants are still in, of a bit of water still in there, just enough to keep it going. Um, and then here, this bag, is the fish. They're double bagged in fish bags and then in that's just so they don't get stressed. Um, so yeah, the apartment is pretty much cleared now and um, time to get out to Spain and leave Andorra right, so we're saying goodbye, the apartment's all cleaned brought everything down to the car downstairs we won't be back here till our gang will watch the house we have a gang watching the house we have Rastaman 
We have Coil, Army Man from Cod. We have a uh, good old Squanchy when he goes berserk. And then this lad who's just, you know, he was normal at the start. He's chilling. He's just chilling. chilling. <laughs> and the golf ball. But um, yeah, so we're off down to Spain. Right, so we've just we're just heading out of Iron Sal now, and it's eerie. There's just nobody around. Like this is a little road, and you would think to yourself, ah, oh, well, that just looks normal, you know. But you always pass a car. About twenty cars normally. Oh, look, here's one. Here's one. A low car. But as you can see, like most cars are parked because people are not going anywhere. People are sticking to their houses. They're trying to self-isolate. They're doing the right things, but um, it is kind of creepy down here. There's just nothing. Um, all the tourists got cleared out today and most of the workers left as well and yeah as you can see the tourists are the tourists are on their way too because the Spanish border is supposed to be closing on eight, on Monday which is tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning and we decided we'd leave now so as that we don't have any trouble but I'm gonna stick maybe the GoPro on as we get closer to the border because I don't think I'll be allowed to record there but I will be allowed to have like a dash cam so I should be able to record and I have a feeling we might be stuck there for a little while but Small 
TV. Yeah. And it takes up 90% of the car. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're on the on the way down now, and should be a nice journey from here on out. Avoid all these towns. Just stick to these lovely open Street roads. Open roads with like hardly anybody else on them. Gonna be fun. So it's a couple of days later and we're I'm settling back in with all the animals in the routine. And um, we're just out on a walk now with all the dogs. I'm gonna give you a little look around the house and uh, let you know what the situation is with the virus here. But as you can see, we're kind of in the middle of nowhere. So we're pretty safe here. So this is Oscar. Hey, right, Oz. Ready? And this is Charlie. Coda and Perry and we have more but I'm not sure where they are go so this is all our land as far as the wall over there and a boundary that's just there it's gonna be all fancy and soon Perry Pickle This is Cleo now, over here. All right, Cleo, hey baby girl. Up, 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 yay, yay. And this is how they play. Get her Oz, get Cleo. So this is Cody, he's six months old. And he's already about 25 kilos. So he's um he's a grown boy. Aren't you Cody? And that's he makes every other dog look small. Oscar is a golden doodle. And uh, he was our biggest dog. Oz! Oz! He but he's already been overtaken by the six-month-old puppy. Yes, by you! Come in. Come on. So we do have one other dog that was left to us when we bought this house in Spain. Um, his name is Dally and he's like a golden retriever, collie type dog. Um, he's gorgeous but he kind of does his own thing when we go out on walks. So. I'm not sure where he is at the moment. This is, this is Dally. This is the dog that was left in the house with us and he's fit into our pack nicely now. Hey Dally. Hey. 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 But this is our drive. So you come down from here, come right down. This is not our land here, this is our perimeter. So from here, 
This is where the fence will go across to there. And then it goes right down there. We have four and a half acres. It's covered in olive trees at the moment. We also have a few different trees. We have some grape vines. We have lemon here. That's a carob tree. We have three carob trees. There's one down there. Um, and we also have two apple trees and two orange trees. So, oh, and this is also a fig tree, which we didn't know until only recently. So we're gonna have some nice figs. Um, firewood. Yeah, so we go under the carob tree into the house. Yeah, all the dogs we were just out are in here. Along with all the other animals, I'm just gonna give you a quick look at all the other animals. So, we shall start over here. So in here, he's in our house. This is Gregory. So I'll show you Gregory now, I'll take him out. It's another carob tree. So yeah, Gregory lives outside most of the time. He is here. Gregory's about 10 years old. He's a lovely Taurus. He's a Sulcata. Uh, and Gregory is actually a she, we think. You can't really sex tortoise when they're young. So we have to wait till he's a little bit older. And it looks like it's a girl. We have lovely new, he needs a bath, but we have lovely new growth all the way. And as you can see, all the dogs are super chill. I don't like telling people that they should have their dogs and tortoise together. And Gregory is only here for the time being because we only moved into this house in October. Um, and Gregory will be getting his own big enclosure out on the land soon. Um, but our dogs have grown up with the tortoise around and we are very careful to keep our eye on all of them just so we know nothing is going to happen but he is the boss and all of the dogs are afraid of him so that will give you an idea of the situation here we very recently well my girlfriend very recently got a phone call and somebody was looking to get rid of this turtle because it had been left in a house that they bought and it was out in a paddling pool and had just been left there basically to die. So we decided we'd take her. Her name is Gloria and this this is Gloria. She's a gorgeous little red-eared slider and she loves to claw. She's beautiful though. So she's only in this tub for the time being. We've actually got something for her that we're gonna set up very soon. I'll make a video on that. But that is Gloria. We've got Garcia. Turn on the light. This is Garcia. She's another little sulcata. She'll be a baby. And she'll hopefully, when she grows up, go out to live with Greg. We hope she's a boy. But her name is Garcia for now. Because it was advertised as a girl, even though you can't sex them this young. But yeah, that's, that's Garcia, she's beautiful. In here, we have Loki. Loki is our Tegu. And he's about, he's, he's nearly a year old, I think. Yeah, now his enclosure looks a bit dirty. But the reason for that is we put wet substrate in and he kicked it everywhere. So, yeah, he's happy at the moment and healthy and he's getting an outdoor enclosure soon because he's huge. Right, so we're gonna feed Loki. This is our Tegu lizard. And he's a happy boy. You can handle him and he knows the difference between food and hands. We've been working with him, well Sharon has been working with him since we got him. And I've obviously been away for a couple of months, but he has got absolutely gigantic in the time that I was away. And he loves to make his food all dirty and then not want it. Because that's what he does. Right, 
Anyway, now this is our goldfish tank. The goldfish are going to be getting moved outside soon. We're going to dig a pond. And there's also a lovely pleco in here. But God knows where he is at the moment. Um, but yeah. He's in this log, Sharon says. Oh yeah, we can't see him at the moment, but we have two regular goldfish and one shibuka. And then we have one more fish tank. And it's the fish tank I brought down from Andorra. Which, as you can see, is a little bit different because stuff moved around in transport. But everything is happy and the barb is back in there because I didn't have a tank to put her into. And once I put her in, it's very hard to get her back out. The shrimp are still in there and I can actually see one up the top. Just in there. So they are surviving and I think that might be due to these little bits of plant that fell off. They're able to hide much easier in these little bits of plant and the barb can't see them. In fact, both of the shrimp are up there at the moment. So yeah, and I think that this blue female swordtail is pregnant, which is good. The little orange one's still not pregnant. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's all of our animals.